did you see that pic that's been blowing up online? It's of this World War II relic, and get this, there's a cigar that's still in one piece even after all these years. And that's not all. There's a bunch of other cool stuff too. Makes you wonder what other awesome military treasures are out there waiting to be found, right? So, about that viral metal suitcase? It was first found in Nevsky Pyatachok, Russia. Russian historians teamed up with local experts and confirmed that it belonged to a German soldier from World War II. Inside this suitcase? Uniforms, two boxes of cigars, some booze, a hat, shoes, and a badge. It's believed that the soldier was about to be deployed to the Eastern Front during the Nazi invasion of Russia, which kicked off on June 22, 1941. That Eastern Front conflict? It was one of the bloodiest battles up until 1945. Even though experts are having a tough time tracking down the soldier's family to return the items, one thing's for sure. This find is like a historical time capsule. Another discovery includes a food container from an ex-Soviet soldier and a bigger one. Maybe for soup, perhaps? There's also a shovel that's seen better days, an iron helmet, some big bullets, and surprise, surprise, a pretty rare weapon. It's believed to be the Degtyaryov machine gun. Known as the DP, it's a light machine gun made by the Soviets that used 762 by 54 mm bullets and was introduced in 1928. There's also a wooden box with 14 mortar shells. Yikes, that's kind of freaky, right? Next up, there's the Ruchnoi Pulamyot Degtyaryova, or the Degtyaryov hand machine gun. It's another light machine gun that uses seven, 62 by 39 MMM 43 bullets, also made by the Soviets. It was developed by weapon specialist Vasily Degtyaryov as a replacement for the earlier mentioned DP. But that's not all, folks. There are tons of other items that all serve as reminders of the intense battles of World War II. Man, let's hope history doesn't repeat itself. Not just war gear, a lot of treasure hunters from World War II are actually on the lookout for stacks of gold that the Nazis reportedly looted and then lost during the war. So, one of the finds? A crystal salt extraction mine near the village of Merkers. This is where the Nazis hid about 100 tons of gold and a bunch of stolen art from World War II. And that's just in one spot. There are 11 more places like this. But here's the twist. When the U.S. Army found it in 1945, the gold and art were believed to have been swiped. It was so much gold that they needed 32 trucks to haul it away. And there are still hundreds of tons of Nazi gold that are MIA today. Now, this place is a historical tourist spot in Germany called the Merkers Adventure Mines. Visitors can go deep into the Merkers Mine about 860 meters below the surface and see the huge potassium salt tunnels with a constant temp of 28 degrees Celsius that stretch for 4,600 kilometers. Then there's this researcher, Jeff Gusky. From his explorations, he found notes from both U.S. and German soldiers who fought on the French-German border. This area has around 500 underground sites used during World War I. Jeff Gusky's work was later showcased by National Geographic in their August 2014 issue to mark the 100th anniversary of World War I. One of the ancient underground mining caves he visited is in Neuors, France about 120 kilometers north of Paris. Here, he found thousands of scribbles or graffiti in the mining area made by World War I soldiers, totaling about 1,800 peeps. Some drew pictures, but most just wrote their names and where they were from. They probably made these marks hoping their grandkids would remember them. Because the war in Paris was brutal, killing many and forcing a lot of soldiers to hide underground. 
Being both a photographer and a doctor, Jeff Gusky captured these scribbles on his personal website. You can check it out. The Hidden World of WDWI. Going way back, there's this Roman soldier camp that was MIA for like 2,000 years. It was first spotted when the water level of the Lima River in Galicia, northwest Spain, dropped. This ancient Roman military camp was first set up around 75 AD. But the camp, named Aquis Quercanus, was abandoned a century later, probably because they saw the river was going to swallow it up. The Faro de Vigo newspaper crew were the first to snap pics of the remains of this Roman camp using a drone. And man, those stone structures looked pretty neat from up there. Word is, back in the day, this camp could house up to 600 Roman soldiers, with all the bells and whistles like temples, clinics, and even hot baths. Next up, there's this discovery from a burial site in Valsgard, an ancient town on the outskirts of Uppsala, Sweden. That kind of changed the whole Vikings are bad dudes narrative. Archaeology prof Neil Price said that in the Middle Ages, Vikings did lead a lot of raids and their warriors were hardcore. But not many folks know they were also pros as traders, craftsmen, and farmers. You can now find these Viking ship artifacts at the Uppsala University Museum near Stockholm. Scientists here are working on the Vikings Begin exhibit, showcasing artifacts from Valsgard dating back to 650 AD. It's not just swords, shields, and fancy helmets. They found a mini set of scales used for trading and Roman glass vessels, and a bunch of other artifacts that are far from fierce. Oh, and BTW, no horned helmets were found. Turns out those horned Viking helmets we've heard about? Total fiction. And here's a wild find. A tower stacked with tanks like it just got bombed. Actually, it's the Monument of Hope for Peace, or Espoir de Paix, in French. This monument in Yarze, Lebanon, was built to celebrate the end of the Lebanese Civil War in 1990. Designed by French-born American artist Armand Fernandez in 1995, it's packed with 78 military vehicles from different eras and countries. The monument is made to look like a bombed-out building, with the vehicles all jumbled inside, 